Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Thank you so much for joining me for tea time once again. Today we have some matcha powder and some passion fruit and a couple other things. Really, really good antioxidants, really healthy. Good stuff, really good stuff. What do we got here? Pick your poison, guys, pick your poison. <laughs> you know, I love this time of year. This is my absolute favorite time of year. We're a month away from Halloween, but we're getting there. <laughs> we're getting there. So. Today, Black Magic Pocket Cinema 6K, guys, 6K. Just last video, we were talking about the 90D, Canon's 90D, that is a 4K video recorder now, right? And I was talking to you about it and saying that it's really not too bad. Well, we have 6K here from Black Magic that looks really quite impressive. A little bit more expensive, of course, but looks really good. I want to get into it with you a little bit. I want to talk to you guys about it and see what you think about it. And is it something that would be interesting to you? So before I get into it, I want to say that if you haven't checked out my latest product, which is the Aurora Microfiber Cleaning Cloths, please check them out. They clean everything from high-end multi-coat precision glass, like your lenses, all the way to iPads and iPhones and tablets and laptops and, of course, any type of touchscreen, even the touchscreens in your car, even your kids' video games, whatever it is, it will clean these surfaces just like new, I promise you. Check them out. They work amazing. And if you're like a lot of folks out there that have already transitioned into mirrorless cameras, you know the bane of mirrorless is just the sensors just get so dirty, right? They're dirty all the time. We need to be able to clean them. So one of the products that I invented just before this one was the Aurora Camera Care products. They are both cleaning for sensors as well as lenses. Definitely look into this product if you do have a dirty sensor. It doesn't matter if it's full frame, if it's APS-C or micro four thirds. I have one specific for each one of those sensor sizes. Check it out. They clean amazing. It'll literally look like brand new, your sensor, when you're done with it. And I make it extremely easy and quick and safe to use. And the main thing is a lot of people are scared of cleaning their sensor. Is it like, ah, oh, we have to go inside the camera with this thing? Well, I made it simple. It's a two-step process. You have dry and you have wet. You go over it with the wet first, then you go over with the dry and you're done. Literally that quick. Within about 30 seconds, 45 seconds, you have a perfectly spotless, clean sensor easy and safe. So definitely check those out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a coupon code of YT20. That's YT20. For all this week, anything that you like from my store over at jchristina.com, put it in the card at the very end. Use that promo code YT20 and you're going to get 20% off the entire lot. All right. So check that out. Anyways, enough promotion of my own stuff. Let's get right into the Black Magic Cinema 6K. I really like this a lot. I think it's really interesting for Canon people especially, and I'm going to get into that later, but keep that in mind. Unlike its predecessor, the 4K version, which was a micro four third, this one is that Super 35 or nearly Super 35. So it does have a bigger sensor in it, which is really, really nice. Now, what people are using these cameras for is like, like weddings or music videos or corporate events or anything that you really need to get a really good video out of, right? Uh, if you're vlogging, running and gunning, you might not use this camera, but if you're sitting down and you're a high-end YouTuber and you're making money as a content creator, this is probably something to check out. It does come with this lightweight microfiber polycarbonate composite type of material. So it is lightweight and it's hard. So you're not worrying about breaking it. Okay. It's not made out of plastic. And I do like the way that it's set up. When you first see it, you're like, wow, it's kind of an odd shaped camera. It's really long, but there's a reason for that. And the reason is it has this massive five inch screen on the back. You know, it's not like most DSLRs where you have a little three inch screen. No, this is a five inch touch screen on the back of this thing, right? So 
Really, really cool. I like that a lot. And this new larger sensor gives you a lot more depth of field, which is really nice. Whereas when you're shooting Micro Four Thirds, anyone that shoots Micro Four Thirds, you know one of the problems with it is it's hard to get a really nice shallow depth of field. Well, with this new sensor, it looks much better, as you can see by these photos. Now, also what I find interesting is it is compatible with a ton of cinema type lenses, but what really grabs me is that it has an EF mount to it. So all of my Canon glass will mount directly to this camera. And what's really nice is it provides complete control with those lenses. So you have aperture, you have your autofocus, which works, and even image stabilization. So as a Canon shooter, having the ability to just use any of your EF glass, that's really powerful. Now it does provide 13 stops of dynamic range. Remember, this is a purpose-built video camera, all right? So 13 stops of dynamic range, which is amazing. It also shoots from ISO 400 up to 25,600. You notice the low is 400. So if you're gonna be doing something in really bright light, you are gonna have to get an ND filter for your lenses. Now, the camera itself is optimized for dynamic range. It's optimized to reduce noise, to reduce grain, okay, which is really important when it comes to shooting video. We know that as you shoot photo, if you're shooting JPEG, you're pretty much stuck. But if you shoot raw in a photo, you can pull out a lot of that grain, a lot of that noise and get rid of it. But when you're shooting video, we know for DSLRs, you really can't do much of anything. If the video is grainy, you have grainy video. You can try to push and pull things a little bit, but chances are what you put in is what you get out. Whereas with this, it does shoot raw, so you're getting that latitude to move things around, that full dynamic range, as well as a means of getting rid of a lot of that noise in post-production. Now, this also shoots stills. Once again, this is a video camera, but it does stills all, I think it's like 21 megapixels, nothing fantastic, but then again, it is not a still camera. Also, it captures video. Yes, guys, it will do 24p. You guys rode me hard on the last video with the Canon 90D not shooting 24p. And I was telling you guys how I didn't care. <laughs> and some of you got pissed. Anyways, yeah, so this does do 24p, which is great, and it'll shoot all the way up to 120p. It depends on the film rate, what you're going to be capturing it at, so it does do that. Now, what's really important to me is compatibility, and the files that it does record in are fully compatible with just about any post-production NLE, non-linear editor, that you use. So that is really, really exceptional, and you're not going to have to do transcoding after the fact to be able to use Use the footage. You'll be able to just load the footage in and immediately get right into editing. That is really powerful. Also, it does come with a UHS 2 or the CFast 2.0 media, which is really good. That is standard and they are quick. They need to be to be able to capture 6K. Also, instead of recording an H.264, which is compressed video, it does record raw, like I was saying. So you'll be able to take that raw footage and just like you would with a DSLR image that you take instead of having a JPEG, which you can basically do nothing with, you are recording in RAW. So in post-production, you can do a lot of color grading and really push and pull and get the most out of that dynamic range that the camera has actually recorded. Now, like I said, that five inch screen that's on the back of it is really exceptional. That is just amazing to me because you'll be able to see like a 1920 by 1080 image on the back in high resolution and get in there and just point around and push pull and zoom in get really accurate focus and for all of you chimps out there to just love chimping on the back of the camera you got an extra two inches to chimp with so it is really, really nice, that back screen. Now, they said that it has Gen 4 color science. I don't know what the heck that is, but supposedly it does render skin really well. And that is why I'm with Canon, because I personally love Canon's color science. So for me, skin tone and color is really, really important. And if you can get it right, right in camera to begin with, and not have to fiddle with color grading after the fact to 
get it right. No matter if you're shooting stills or video, I think it's fantastic because it just lessens the amount of time it takes you to produce video or to produce images, right? We know time is money. So color science is very important. Supposedly, they get it right here. I haven't tried this camera out, so let's just say the jury's still out. I do want to test one of these cameras out soon, so we're going to have to put in an email to that effect. Anyways, we'll get into that later. So connections, guys, connections. This is like the camera that has connections for days. There's so many connectors on here. You have a mic adapter, you have your headphone adapter, you have a connection for your full size HDMI out, you have a 12 volt power connector, you have a mini XLR. This is really good mini XLR connector that does have 48 volt phantom power. So if you are a guide like me, for example, using a, a microphone that requires phantom power, it already has it built into it. That is really cool. So mini XLR is great. And of course it has a USB-C connector on it. Now that USB-C connector can be used for offloading images. It could be used for continuous power. It can be used for external recorder connection. So you record externally. So I really like to see USB-C connectors on all cameras these days. It's just a great way to be able to have that connectivity with your camera where we see like the 90D only has USB 2.0 on it. What? Anyways, not to get back into that. So also what I find interesting is the amount of data that it uses to capture video. At 24p, to capture an hour video, you're looking at 250 gigabytes. Whereas at 60p, that same hour is going to take a half a terabyte of data. That's how much it's gonna store. So if you're going to be doing extended video, I think that it'd probably be better to offload the video onto a video recorder. It probably just makes more sense, right guys? Makes more sense. Now, one of the things that most of you video guys out there will appreciate is their built-in timecode generator. So if you don't know, or if you've never done multicam stuff, you just don't understand how much of a pain it is to synchronize video prior to editing. So if you're doing, let's say a four camera shoot, okay? You have to sync all four of those cameras on the timeline before you go and start doing your edits. Doing some type of time code based syncing allows you to sync just in minutes, sometimes in seconds. And then you can get right into the edit. Once again, like I always say, time is money. It is very important to be able to lessen the amount of time it takes you to get straight away into the edit. Now, when it comes to editors, some of you guys like Adobe. For me, I've kind of went Adobe free. As a matter of fact, I did an entire series called Life After Adobe, Cutting the Cord. Definitely go check that out. There's been a lot of people that just absolutely love that series. Check it out. Now, of course, the footage that comes out of this camera could be edited with any NLE, but what's nice about Blackmagic is they provide you with that DaVinci Resolve, the professional version at that, free of charge. That is really, really great. And I'm telling you, as someone that's been working with it lately, I do think that it is one of the best NLEs currently out there. I am using a lot of editors right now because I'm working on my next Life After Adobe series video, which is going to be a replacement to Adobe Premiere Pro. So as far as pricing goes, the old 4K model is right around 12 1295, whereas this new model is sitting around 2495. Let's call it 2500 bucks. Now, you're looking at double the cost almost, but you're looking at 6K also in comparison to 4K. You have a bigger sensor, almost a Super 35 sensor, in comparison to a Micro Four Thirds sensor and a ton of other little features that are just fantastic with this new camera. So, do I think that it's worth the money? I think so. I really do because you're getting a lot out of it. Now, you know, who is this camera for? Is it overkill for a vlogger? Probably, but there's a lot of vloggers out there and content creators, YouTube guys that are using high end recorders these days. They're using Canon C series cameras, C100s, C300s. They're using high end expensive gear. So if you're using that gear already, maybe you're a Canon guy, 
all right? This camera is definitely something for you to look at. Not only can you use all of your high-end Canon glass on there, but also your batteries, those LPE6s, I believe they are, they all work in this camera also. So that's really cool. So I have like a bucket full of those batteries that I can use with this camera. And I have a ton of Canon glass, probably like 15 grand worth or more, 20 grand of Canon glass that I can strap on this also and be able to use all of the features of that glass. Like I said, that is very, very important in my personal opinion. Now, once again, when I looked at the Canon 90D, when I look at that in comparison to this, the 90D is half the price. So is this something that I would look into purchasing for what I do here sitting just hanging out with you guys. The 90D does 4K, this does 6K. Do I need 6K? I probably don't even need 4K at this point. So is this something that I need for this type of situation? Probably not, but when I'm out there shooting with my C100, C300s that I bring in, this could be a really nice camera to either replace some of those with or maybe shoot as B-roll. So this is a really powerful system, very small and compact to be able to bring in 6K, all right, and then be able to do some amazing edits after in post-production. A lot of people are saying, ah, 1080p is good enough. It is good enough. Why do I think that 4K is important and 6K is important, even if you're exporting at 1080p? Well, it's simply for the latitude in post-production. Number one, of course, with this, you're shooting in RAW, so you're gonna be able to do everything that you do like in a RAW image, but in video, so you have a ton of dynamic range. You can do just crazy amount of image color grading after the fact, so really powerful. But what's also important is the ability to get really clean images. And this is specifically for creating video that is very noiseless, okay? Not a lot of artifacts, not a lot of noise or grain, however you wanna call it, when it needs to step up that gain. We know this is shooting at 400 ISO on the low side, so it will gain up to, let's say, 25.6, which is a ton. I mean, that is a lot of dynamic range, and to be able to do it with very low noise produced is fantastic and is very, very important if you're shooting video. So is this a camera for me right now for what I'm doing here? No, but like I said, in the field when I'm using my C100s or C300s that I bring in, this could definitely be a either backup camera or even a main A camera. Just depends on what we're doing. So anyways, guys, like I said before, don't forget to check out both the Aurora microfiber cleaning cloths as well as the Aurora camera care sensor as well as lens cleaning kits. Once again, use promo code YT20, that's YT20 in checkout and you'll be able to get 20% off anything that you purchase over at jchristina.com. So I wanna hear from you. What do you think about this camera? Is this for you? Is this something that you might look into for your video or is it not? What do you think? Do you think 6K is just overkill or do you think that it could be useful for what you're doing? I wanna know your thoughts. So in the comment area, put those thoughts, let us know, let's discuss it, and then go over to our community at community.jchristina.com. Once again, community.jchristina.com. Jump into the community, let's have this discussion. There's a lot of channels over there that you can just have some fun with. Anywhere from photography, videography, even games. <laughs> There's a lot of great stuff and a lot of great people over in the community. So that's it guys, I'm out of here for yet another vlog. If you enjoyed the content, please throw me a big thumbs up. That would be awesome. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you can get all my content when it becomes available and click the bell icon so when it is available, you will be notified of it. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me. That would be awesome. So that's it. Take care. We'll see you in the next one.